All right, this session we're going to be testing diodes to see which make the best crystal radio type of detector. So what we're specifically looking for is the lowest possible forward voltage and the lowest possible impedance, of course. <clears throat> now, we have a selection. First, let's go over the circuit. We have a signal generator coming in. 50 ohm termination, and then we have a 0.01 to block any DC that's coming out of the signal generator. And then we have a 100 microhenry coil with very low ohm resistor going to uh, the resistance going to ground. And that keeps the diode itself from rectifying and building up a charge, which would tend to um, cancel the conduction. All right. Then on our load, we're going to use 100K resistance. We want a very high um, resistance load for it. Uh, later, we will do another test and we'll use a 2K load, which is similar to a headphones, what headphones would be. Okay. You now, we have a set of diodes we're going to test. <clears throat> We've got a 1 in 914, which is a standard uh, switching diode, a silicon switching diode, junction diode. 1N270, which is germanium. Um, it's a standard uh, high conductance germanium diode, typical of what's used in a computer for uh, high speed switching, what they called high speed switching back in the uh, 50s and 60s. Okay, then we have a 1N21 microwave diode, it's a silicon uh, point contact diode. Um, we'll see what that does. We have a germanium 1N60, this is a video detector diode. And this is a uh, germanium point contact diode. We have one in eighty-two, which is a which is a UHF uh, mixer diode. That's a germanium point contact again. We have a germanium two uh, CK seven o five. Not sure what kind of diode that one is. There's not much information available on it, or at least I couldn't find it in the amount of time that I spent looking for it. We have a CK706. I, I suspect one of them is a slightly better noise figure than the other. I don't know. We'll see if they're the same. I, I would bet that they're going to be identical uh, for detecting. And then we have a small signal Schottky diode. Um, these are, you know, for rectification and things like that, they have a fairly good uh, forward voltage, but they're not as good as germanium. And we're going to show that um, right now. Uh, Shockies are not as, as effective as uh, germanium diodes. And then we're going to test uh, cat whisker on both Galena and iron pyrite and see how sensitive we can make them. Okay, we'll use two different cat whiskers. I've got a Galena one and I've got an iron pyrite. I've got those two. I don't have any of the other uh, more exotic uh, crystals. And then we have the standard GE 1N34s. This is an original 1N34 from back in the in the uh, 40s. And then we have 1N34A, which is the later version that came from in the 50s and 60s. I don't think they're made anymore. 1N34 I don't think is made anymore. If you order 1N34A, it's going to be something uh, that's not really a 1N34. Because these are point contact diodes, and the later ones you get look like a 914. That's not a point contact diode. Okay, so that's going to be our group of diodes. All right, here we have our test set up. We've got the input resistor here, with the generator hooked to here, and this terminates the generator. 0.01 capacitor couples into the uh, circuit, and um, Our 100 microhenry inductor, and then we have our diode test points will be here, and our 100k resistor here. Go to these two points here, and then our 100k for the load, and then um, our scope connection is between these two, and that's what we we're going to test with. Okay. Now we're going to use a modulated one megahertz signal. And we'll set the 
set the level of the signal um, to whatever the diode requires. And it could be anything from uh, millivolts up to, oh, half a volt or so for the silicon diode. And um, we'll use a, uh, a, a decent scope to go ahead and make the measurements. Okay, here we have our test set up. Alright, the first diode that we're going to test is going to be a 914. Okay, that's just a plain switching diode, silicon switching diode. Okay. Okay, we got the 914 in there, and um, what we're going to do is we're going to increase the input until we get 10 millivolts on the output of detected signal. Okay, so we'll start bringing the input up. Okay, we're not getting anything there. Okay, let's go up another step. Okay, I'm going to cut that down. Okay. Now we're starting to get a signal. Still can't get it. Boy! <laughs> Woo! Oops, there we go. Now we're getting it. Okay. Okay. Twelve. Twelve. Okay. Ten millivolts. I'm reading the 10 millivolts on the reader here. Okay, so for that we're reading an input of 480 millivolts. Okay, so that's half a volt. Alright, I'm going to switch it over and we're going to put in the germanium diode. Oh, wow. Woo! So going from a silicon diode to a germanium, you get that much difference in signal. All right, we'll bring it down until we're reading 10 millivolts again. Okay, we're right at 10. 47 millivolts. So it's 10 times better. Okay, next I'm going to put in the 1N21 microwave diode. Okay, that's this little microwave diode. Okay, now that's, I think it's supposed to be germanium, but I don't know for sure, but it's not giving as much signal. Okay, okay, reading right at 10. Okay, 100 millivolts. So it's pretty good. It's a lot better than a than a 914, but it's uh, not as good as a germanium switching diode. That germanium diode is a 1N270. That's a uh, little computer diode, with high conductance. Okay, now we're going to put in a 1N60, which is a video detector diode from the old TV sets. All right, that was doing pretty darn good. That's another germanium. Okay, I'm going to cut that down until we read. Okay, 50, 53. That's almost as good as the 270. So at 1N60 is a, is a good detector diode. It's, okay, okay, the next one is a 1N82. Okay, this is a mixer diode from the old TV sets in the UHF tuners. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's a germanium diode. 0. Point contact type of thing. Ooh, we're right on, 52. So that's as good as the 1N60. All right. Okay, the next one is a CK706. This is another um, 
TV diode. I'm pretty sure it's a point contact germanium, but I, I, it, the data sheet didn't say what kind it was. Okay. Wow, we're right on it. I mean, it's, it's still it's 10 and 52. We're okay on there, so it's about the same. That's a germanium. It's a little germanium diode. That's used in um, TV sets as a, a video detector. Now here we have a Schottky, a small signal Schottky diode. It's um, this is a little small signal job. has a has a, a lower um, forward voltage than a plain silica. Let's see what it does. Okay. So yeah, it's not as good as the germaniums. Okay, I'm going to bring the voltage up. It's 8, it's 9, 9, 9. Okay, there we go. It's 10. Okay, 121. See, that's not as good. Shockies are not as good. Okay. Next, we're going to put cat whisker. I've got a Galena. This is a Galena cat whisker. I've adjusted it to a good sensitive spot. My kitty's down here. She said, you mentioning cat whiskers? Yeah. Huh? Yes, you want to be in the video? Let me let me show everybody you. You want to say hi to everybody? Here, look up here. Yeah, see, she says hi to everybody. Okay. Okay. Now we've got the Galena in there. All right, it has become unadjusted. Let's see if I can get it. There we go. And see how touchy that is? Well, I'm just adjusting that whisker. There it is. Ooh, got it, got it. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. Okay, there we're reading 10 at 36. Woo, Galena's pretty darn good. That's the best so far. Okay, I've got another one. It's an iron pyrite. I don't think this has been jiggled enough. This is one here has got iron pyrite in it. There, I'm using steel spring as the cat whisker. I some people have said that there are other metals that work better. I don't know. I don't know. It isn't something that I have much knowledge of. Just the slightest bump and the damn thing goes out of adjustment, which is the big reason they, they stopped using these things. Oh, they're held adjust. Okay, there we are. Nope. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Okay. Okay, there's 10. Okay, we're reading 74. Not as good as Galena. Or you know, it could be that I have to poke around on there some more for a better better place. Okay. Now, the next one we have three 1N34 diodes here. I have, okay, these are plain 1N34s. They're not 1N34A, the later version. We'll do the A in a minute. Okay, I've got one here which has a poor forward to back ratio. All right, it reads, okay, if I read it, 
using a meter, we've got about okay, about 1,200 ohms in the forward direction, and oh, that's not bad at all. 200k in the reverse direction. That's 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 darn good. All right, let's see what it does. Okay. There's 10. Okay, that's 45. Okay. Now, I got another one. Okay, this one has a reverse of 400 and a forward. about 700 ohms. So that's a little better than the other one. The other one was 1.2k forward. This one's got a, a few hundred ohms better. Okay. Okay, 39. Okay, see that's a little better. It's, it gives a 39 instead of 45 like the other one. Okay, I've got one other one. Same kind of diode, but it has a low output. It says it's low output. Okay, they. So forward resistance. Okay, that is about 900, and a reverse, oh, 200. So the, uh, the high end of the reverse is, is, is poorer than the other two. Okay, fifty one. And yeah, that's a that's a low one, so it, it's giving poorer results than the others. So um, we've got forty five on one of them, thirty nine on the other, and fifty one on this one. So you can see that if you've got a bunch of diodes, you can have some good ones and some bad ones. Okay, next one we have a one in thirty four A. Now this is the later model glass ones. Okay, 47 and 10. Okay, it's right at 10, so we're, we're actually a little high. So the A version is 44 compared to 39, 45, and 51 on the others. So the difference between the A and the, uh, and the plain 1N34 is not very much. 
I don't have a lot of A uh, diodes. <clears throat> I've got maybe 10 or 12 of them over there. All right, the back resistance on this one is 2 mega ohms, and the forward resistance. <clears throat> is 900 ohms. So it has considerably better reverse resistance than the other ones. Okay, the next one I've got, this is a Russian diode. This one came from Russia and uh, it's, it's called a D18 or something like that. And uh, it's a germanium and we'll see what it does. Okay, the, let's see what the resistance is. Okay, forward resistance is 900 ohms. Reverse, very good at, oops, I had my finger moved. Two mega ohms, okay, that's as good as the, uh, the A. All right. Okay, but look, our output is not as good, okay. It's 55. So it's it's equal to just a, a poor germanium. All right. Okay, so that in concludes our sensitivity test. Okay, the next test that we're going to do, I'm going to take a headphone and I'm going to connect a headphone onto the um, output and we're going to see how many millivolts input it takes to get a tone out of the output. And I'm going to listen in here and adjust the amplitude of the signal until I just can hear that signal. I'm not talking about having it enough to where you can understand talk or anything else. I'm just going for barely detectable signal. Okay, I'm going to start off with the 914 diode. We're using our, our same test setup, except this time I've got the uh, headphone connected to the, uh, to the load. Okay. Okay, we're going to test at two different frequencies, 1 megahertz and 10 megahertz, to see if there's any difference in detecting sensitivity um, as frequency goes up, the RF goes up. Okay, we've got the modulation set to 1 kilohertz. Okay, this is a 914. Okay, we're having to put 700, we're measuring the uh, amplitude of the input. It's 780 millivolts. And we'll switch to, okay. That's the same. Okay, that's at 10 megahertz. And that's at 1 megahertz. Okay, I'll switch over to the next diode is a 270, which is our germanium, high conductance germanium diode. Wow. Okay, for that one on 1 megahertz, we're looking at 150 millivolts. Okay, we'll switch up to 10 megahertz, and it didn't drop, get about the same. Okay, next we're going to go to 1N21 microwave diode. OK. 
okay, I can't hear it. Two hundred and ten millivolts on that. Okay, it's a little less sensitive than it went uh, went in two seventy. And we'll switch to 10, oh, that's 10 megahertz, and this is 1 megahertz. Okay, same thing. So we're not seeing, on these um, commercial diodes, we're not seeing much of a difference between 1 and 10 megahertz. Okay, next we're going to go for our 1N60 video detector diode. Okay, 180 millivolts. That's not bad. It's germanium, and between the two, there's no difference in amplitude in the sound in the one to ten megahertz. All right, next we're going to use the one in eighty two tuner diode, UHF tuner diode. It's a little point contact germanium, one hundred and thirty. No difference at all between the one in 10 megahertz. Next we have a CK706 um, video detector diode. No difference between 1 and 10 and we're reading 130 again. Okay, next we're going to try the small signal Schottky diode. This diode is one that's sold um, for balanced mixers and things like that. Nothing. There we go. Okay, 270 millivolts. See, that's noticeably higher than your germanium stuff. Okay, and between 1 and 10, no difference at all between 1 and 10 megahertz. Okay, next we're going to put the Galena Crystal. Now these are rumored to have poor sensitivity at higher frequencies. Okay, that's the Galena job. Okay, get that in there without knocking it out of adjustment. It's, it's, <laughs> it's going out of adjustment just by itself. There, oh, look at that, look at that, look at that. Don't, but, oh, good, good. Okay, now there. Here's at 1 megahertz. Here's at 10 megahertz. Clearly, there is a loss in detection in the Galena crystal. Okay, and we're reading 210 millivolts. And at 10 megahertz, okay, here's at 10 megahertz. We'll bring. Okay, and we're at 440. So we drop in half, going to 10 megahertz on that crystal. All right. I got my finger on the dead gum adjustment that probably knocked it out of adjustment. All right. Let's see if we can get a. See if we can find a. Oh 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 oh! Look at that. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, that's a 10 megahertz. We're reading 240. Ooh. Now look at that. Okay, here we're reading 1 megahertz. We don't get any rectification. Here at 10 megahertz, we get rectification. And we're reading 240 to get a signal. All right, let's go back to 1 megahertz. Now I'll have to adjust the I'm going to see if I can adjust it to get rectification. Okay. See, there we're getting rectification. See, the bottom half is clipped off and the top half is not. Okay. Okay, that's 300 millivolts. Okay, now I'm going to leave it at that setting and go to 10.
210. Okay. So it's 200. It, leaving it that set, of, we have 300 at 1 megahertz and 210 at uh, 10 megahertz. That's better than before. Okay, so uh, the iron pi rate, we lose about a third of a signal going to the short waves. Okay, the next one, we're going to use our 1N34. This is our standard 1N34. It's not the high conductance one. It's the, uh, not the A version. 100 millivolts at 10 megahertz. It's actually about 110. Okay, and it's the same between 1 and 10 megahertz. So we get about <clears throat> 110 millivolts. So 1 in 34 clearly is our best one so far. We had the 1 in 82 at 130, which was a fairly good one, but 110 is our best. That's a, a 1 in 34 diode. Next, <clears throat> we have 1 in 34A. This is a later version, an A version. It has a higher front to back resistance. There's no difference between 1 and 10 megahertz, and we're reading 110 millivolts, same as the other. Okay, next we have a Russian diode. This one came out of a Russian crystal radio. Came from Russia. These are the ones you see on eBay, uh, you know, twenty for a dollar, something like that. Those are not the best deal. A friend got some of those diodes. Uh, he bought twenty of them, and out of the twenty, there was um, several that had uh, no difference between front and back resistance. They they were defect. Okay, we're at one forty, and going between one and ten. No difference between 1 and 10 megahertz and 140 millivolts. All right, so that shows the basic number of millivolts you'll have to have to get a noise out of the thing. Okay, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to try using a slight bias to forward volt, uh, bias the diode, and we're going to see how that affects the sensitivity. Okay, we have our basic circuit exactly the same, but instead of running the, the uh, DC return to ground, we're going to run it to a source of a small amount of voltage. We have a 500 ohm potentiometer, and we can adjust it from 0 to 1 volt, and that will provide our bias, and we're going to bypass with a capacitor. Other than that, everything is the same as it was for the other tests. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and um, start. We'll start with the 914 and go through the bunch just like we did before. I forgot to draw in the drawing. I also have the headphone. The headphone is connected to it and what we're doing is we're uh, adjusting the bias until we get the best signal in the headphone. We want the, the lowest signal that we can hear in the headphone. You can see as I adjust the bias See, that's with the bias down to zero. We get no signal at all. This is a 914, so we're well below the threshold. Now, as I bring the bias up, we're starting to forward bias the diode. We see the signal coming in. See, in that we bias too much, we, we don't cancel out the bottom half. So we want the maximum ratio of top to bottom, which is right there. And I'm listening in the headphone right now. Okay, I'm going to cut the signal. Okay, I'm just barely picking it up. Okay, that's 100 millivolts. Okay, if you remember on the other, when we looked at the other, it was uh, somewhere around 700. So we were able to bias it out to where we're almost as sensitive as a, one of the other diodes, the, the germanium diodes. Okay, let's put in the next diode. We're going to put in a 270. Okay, that's my best signal right there. And we're reading 78 millivolts. Before it was around uh, 
I think 110 or 200. We'll look at it later. All right, the next one is the um, 1N21. Okay, 74 millivolts. All right, next one is the uh, 1N60 video diode. Okay, we're looking at 70 millivolts. Okay, the next one is going to be our uh, 1N82. Okay, we're looking at 74 millivolts. Okay, the next one is our CK706 video detector diode. Okay, 74. And the next one is a plain 1N34. Okay, 68 millivolts. Okay, the next one is the 1N34A. The difference between the 1N34 and the 1N34A is the ratio of front to back resistance is noticeably better. The 1N34 is around 200 to 300K. The 34A is in the megohms, 2 to 3 megohms. Back resistance. Forward resistance is about the same. Okay, 70 millivolts. All right, the next one is going to be a Galena. I don't know if this is still adjusted or not. I'll probably have to fool with it. Well, this piece of Galena doesn't have very many sensitive spots. See, we're, we're looking for the to chop the bottoms off of it. Just getting a signal doesn't count. We have to chop the bottoms off and leave the leave the tops alone. There, oh, well. Yep, yep. Okay. See, we've got the bottoms chopped off and the tops are still there. Okay, I'm going to put bias. Okay, bias doesn't really help. Okay, let's see what it takes. Bias has no effect on it. it takes 96. And the last one is the iron pyrite. I've probably bumped it. Well, there's a good place right there, somewhere. There. Oh, oh I can't keep it. There we go. There we go. Very good. Okay. No, it's crappy. 170. I'm sure it would be better if I could get that better place. Hmm? There we go. Look at that. Oop, good one. Okay. Okay, it's 125. That's better than before, but still pretty crappy. All right. Here we have our... Uh, Shocky diode. Okay, 56. 56 millivolts. All right, next we do the D18. All right. Okay, we're looking at 70. Okay, and that takes care of all of our diodes. So that shows that bias can help. Okay, let's go and we'll compare it to, um, to the other readings and see what we get. Okay, here we have a graph showing the results. Okay, we can see that the, the 914 um, without any bias, it takes 700 millivolts. That is just absolutely unusable for, for any kind of crystal detecting. Okay, and we also have the Galena, 
takes a pretty high. That takes uh, somewhere around uh, 400 millivolts. And a Schottky, without any bias, that's taking around 220, 230. And um, by far our best is the, uh, the the germanium stuff. All the germaniums. See, we got that at at about 120, and um, went in 34 at below 100. Okay, they're just 100, 110, and our D18 is a little over 100. Okay, now the red is the biased. What we just did at the very end, and we can see that if we bias the 914, we can bring it down almost into the range of where it's equal to a um, an unbiased uh, 1 in 34. So, you know, if we bias the 914, we can have um, approximately plain germanium equivalent. Okay, the 1 in 270, um, if we bias the 1 in 270, we clearly beat the we beat the, the uh, 914 silicon, and the same thing goes with the uh, one in 21, and um, the one in 60. See, these are all down there in that 50 to 75 range. Okay, and then um, the Schottky, we could do pretty darn good with that Schottky. Look at that, we get it down there um, below 50, so that's a, that's really good. And then, of course, the champion is the one in 34, which even biased is beating all of the rest of them. So it looks like for a crystal radio, if you've got a good one in 34, whether you do it whether uh, you do it with bias or without bias, you're going to get your best um, capability. Okay, I'll frame this up so if you want to print it off, you can do it. Okay. All you have to do is freeze the screen and do a print screen. Okay, that's it.